Welcome to Daily Reading the Word for December 14th. I'm Jonathan Kinsler. Today's scripture reading is found in Joel chapter 3 and Revelations chapter 5. Um, the title of my devotional is A Lamb Standing as If Slain. And the verse we're looking at is Revelation chapter 5, verse 6, which says, And I saw between the throne with the four living creatures and the elders a lamb standing as if slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. In some ways, this is one of the most important verses in Revelation, especially Christologically, how it, how it talks about Jesus Christ. Revelation 5 verse 5 tells us that the only one found able to open the scroll, and that's what goes on um, before it, uh, even before this verse, it, it, in verses 3, for example, no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the book or look into it. But then in verse 5, stop weeping, behold, the lion that is from the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has overcome so as to open the book and its seven seals. What does that say about Jesus Christ? What does that say about this lion um, is that he's outside of creation. He's the son. It's announced that he is the lion from the tribe of Judah, clearly referring back to Genesis 49, 9 to 10, which is a prophecy concerning the Judaic and Davidic king that was to come. He's the Messiah. That's um, an awesome promise. Um, this in itself is great, but in the present verse, in verse 6, while he had heard about a lion, now he sees a lamb standing as if slain. And so where's the lamb? Well, the li lion is a lamb. He sees a, a lamb slain. Um, and what's that about? This lamb is said to triumph and be able to open the scroll with its seven seals. So you can see why he's called the lion, and it's appropriate for him. He does conquer. Um, he has overcome, as lions do, when they are strong and victorious. Um, but he did so by laying his life down. He was fully submitted to the Father and his eternal plan, which included Jesus dying on a cross and suffering as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, as we see in John 1, 29. He laid down his life for us, and he has the wounds to show it. So he's a lamb who is, um, who is standing, so no longer ever to fall, but it's as if he was slain, and there's the marks of the cross that are on him. He will always have those those scars to show that he died for our sins. Even remember after his um, resurrection, when he shows himself to the disciples, and especially remember Thomas, he shows himself his hands and his sides, says, place your, your hands here and here. That, that, that was his glorified body even. He still has that in Revelation. He still has, is a lamb as though he had been slain. He will always bear the marks of his suffering and death for us. Um, but in order to remind us that he triumphed through both his death and resurrection. And remember, we're also in communion to recall that event. Um, remember this uh, in remembrance of, of Jesus. Do this in remembrance of, of what Jesus has done for us. Um, so he triumphed through both his death and resurrection. Through bearing our sin, he has condemned sin in the flesh and has lost its power. Through his resurrection, he conquered death and the grave so that all who believe will live and reign with him. And then we see that this lamb with seven horns and seven eyes has defeated the dragon with ten horns and seven heads. He is not a weak lamb. We see in Revelation chapter 9, 19, verse 11, And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on it is called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and wages war. He is a strong lamb, but he's also gentle, compassionate, and loving to all who, who come to him. Remember how he is described Behold, my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved in whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him. He shall proclaim justice to the nations. He will not quarrel nor cry out, nor will anyone hear his voice in the streets. 
Think about how gentle he is. A battered reed he will not break off, and a smoldering wick he will not put out until he leads justice to victory. And we see that in Matthew 12, 18 through 20. He has all authority in heaven and earth. All creation will worship the Lamb. And we see that at the end of this chapter in Revelation 5, 13. Every created thing which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth. Remember, he wasn't found in any of the created things because he's not created. He's beyond all time. He's always existed. And, all, and he heard them saying, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor and glory and dominion forever. Will you submit to the Lamb's rule in your life? Will you follow the Lamb wherever he goes? When you, in light of what he has done for us, in light of who he is, all authority is in his hands, and we see that he's omniscient. Remember, he has, he's omniscient, he has the seven eyes. He's omnipotent, he has the seven horns, which are the spirits of, which is actually the Holy Spirit, a sevenfold spirit of, of God. Um, there's... Jesus, integral to the purpose and plan of God, now reigns. But he reigns, remember, with compassion. He reigns with mercy, with grace. How do we respond to what the Lamb has done for us? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this word. I thank you for how Jesus is both the Lion and the Lamb. But he's one that, he's a Lamb, the one who has laid his life down for us. But he's a conquer, a conquering king. He is a Lion. And he's overcome all the powers of the enemy and over sin and death. We have nothing to fear, but we have peace because of his victory. Lord, we give you praise for what Jesus has done. Help us to live rightly before him. Help, him, help us to take him as our, as our king, but also to follow him. Even as he laid his life down for us, we would lay our life down for others. In your name we pray.